blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have blessed us with children and called us to be a blessing. In Christ, who came to bring good news to the poor and welcomed the children, you have revealed your intention for justice and compassion. Prosper now the work of our hands, that we may faithfully serve you by lifting up the next generation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. Okay. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Be strong in the Lord, and in the strength of his power, put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication, To to that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. It seems, with all of these backpacks around us, that we are back to school. Yay. Okay, how many of you, quick show of hands, and this, this goes applies to everybody here, quick show of hands, how many of you are excited about the start of school? I love school. Yes, okay. A lot of parents. Um, how many of you are nervous about the start of school? You can be excited and nervous, by the way. Okay, good, good, yep, okay. How many of you are actually already back to school? Okay, a bunch of you, yeah, okay, good, okay. How many of you, okay, this is a hard one, how many of you are starting a new school this year? Got a couple here, okay, we got a, yeah, just my two, go figure. Um, Okay, so. A lot of emotions, right? And as, as exciting as the new school year can be, starting a new school year can sometimes be hard. New classes, new teachers, new friends. Sometimes it's hard having been away from your friends and community for so long over the summer. And whew, it can be hard getting up out of bed every morning to get to school, packing your lunch, remembering your shoes, all of it. 
<laughs> Especially when you've been able to sleep in and go barefoot all summer. Any kids here or parents finding the school day struggle to be real? Anybody struggling in the school days? Yeah, I think that's a lot of us. Okay, yeah. Well, it turns out that following Jesus can be hard too sometimes. We love Jesus' message of love, but it can be hard to live it out day after day, week after week. It can be hard being kind to everyone, even when someone is mean or really annoys us. And it's hard being a good friend to the folks in our world who might not have many friends or who might not have any money. It's hard and really, really important to stand up for the poor and the oppressed and the marginalized. Even Jesus' followers found it hard. In today's gospel, it says that because, and it says, because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the 12 disciples, do you also wish to go away? Sometimes Sunday morning is hard. Getting out of bed, getting ready, getting to church can be a real challenge. But for everyone here, can you guys look around and see all the people that are in this church? For everyone here, God is calling each one of us to this community to encounter the love of Jesus in our own way. Maybe it's the community and the friends that we have here. Maybe it's the service and the, and the music. Maybe we can't even pinpoint the exact reason what it is that draws us here. Whatever it is, the struggle of Sunday morning, and sometimes Sunday morning is a struggle. Whatever it is, the struggle of Sunday morning becomes worth it because each of us finds something, finds something valuable here. For Peter, in the gospel today, sticking by Jesus is the only option. He responds to Jesus, do you wish to go away? And he says, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. In many ways, that's our response as well. Jesus, we're sticking with you because for us, your way of love is the best way, even though sometimes it can be difficult. And we keep coming back here week after week to be reminded that Jesus' way of love is the best way. And we hear stories of that love and we're fed at this table by that love. And we're filled and inspired to follow Jesus' way of love every other day of, our, of the week at our schools and our offices and in our homes and in the grocery store and in traffic and on the playground. Okay, so I brought my backpack. Did you guys bring backpacks? Just as we bring our backpacks to school and are prepared to do the hard but important work that school gives us, God knows that you and I have to be well equipped. And God supplies us with tools to do the important work of following God and loving our neighbor. Okay, so I brought my own backpack. Let's see what I brought from school. Okay. That sounds heavy, right? It is, it's, got, it's got a fair number of things in it. Uh, let's see. I've got... A pen, okay, it's good, good. I've got, let's see, uh, I've got a notebook, okay. I brought my stuffed animal, right? Um, I have my vintage 1980s Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom on the Thank you very much. Yep, 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 that's, that's, that, that is actually authentic. Well, how do you know? I, um, and, and you guys probably have the same kinds of things in your backpack, right? You've got the notebooks, you've got the lunchbox, You've got the hymnal, you've got the, you've got the Book of Common Prayer, right? That's, you, know, you probably keep the same things in your backpacks that I keep in my backpack. Problem. Well, in the letter to the Ephesians that was read today, Paul talks about putting on the armor of God. But I actually like to think of it less of an armor and more of a backpack. We need to put on the backpack of God. Um, okay, I like to think of the backpack. Okay, we've got 
the notebook of righteousness. We've got the pen of salvation. I've got a water bottle of faith. Okay, maybe that's not a great analogy, but the point is not whether it's about a backpack or armor or something else. The point is that God gives us exactly the tools that we need to follow God and be a good friend to the people around us. Okay, so here's my next question for you. I'm looking for answers. What are some of the things that we need to follow God and be good friends to the people around us? What are some of the things that we could do? Can I give you an example? Kindness. That's a tool that God gives us to follow God and be a good friend. God's love. God love. That's a great one. Absolutely. What else? Patience is a big one. Yeah, good. Rebecca. Respect. Respect. Yeah. Listening. Listening is a good one. Those are all tools that God gives us. God gives us compassion. God gives us faith. God gives us hope. God gives us joy. God allows us to forgive and be forgiven. God gives us joy. Right? These are all tools that allow us to, these are all tools in our God backpacks, right? That God gives us to be faithful, loving followers of God and to love our friends and our neighbors. God wants us to be successful. So God gives us, and it frequently happens here at church, by the way, all the things we need to be God's blessing in the world. So right now, I'm inviting Kira to step up, and I'm going to ask you all to hold up your backpacks. And... Uh, and if you don't have your backpack with you, and I know this is going to be true for a lot of y'all who are heading to the office and, and whatnot, you might not have brought it with you. Imagine your backpack, imagine your briefcase, imagine the bag that you need, your lunch, but whatever it happens to be. If you have a 1980s Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom lunch box, think about, think about it, hold it in your mind, and then Kira's going to give us a blessing. Gracious God, we ask you to bless families, teachers, and us as we enter into a new school year. Grant us open minds and hearts to learn and to experience more fully the majesty of the world you have created. You have blessed us with backpacks that hold our best work and technology that gives us portals to learning and discovery. Bless these tools for our learning and those who use them in your holy name, our life giver, your son, our divine teacher, and the Holy Spirit, our source of true wisdom. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You can go back to your seats now. <laughs> get enough. <laughs> Standing, let us affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty,
With all our heart, we pray to God, creator of all things in heaven and on earth. We pray for the church that it may always be a peace of healing love that welcomes all people. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray for our leaders and for all those who work for peace in our world, that they will have courage and strength to carry on, even in the most difficult times. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill, do not have enough food or water, or have no shelter, that they may find the care, comfort, and support that they need from those around them. Loving God, we pray for our family, friends, and those we have yet to meet, that we will be instruments of Christ's message of love and peace, especially to those who don't think, who don't look, think, or act like us. Loving God, hear our prayer. Almighty God, lover of justice, hear these, the prayers of your children, and grant them for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The peace of Christ be always with you. Please greet one another with a sign of God's peace. for a few moments, just for a few announcements. A special welcome to you if you're new or visiting us today here at St. Mary's. We'd love to get to know you a little bit better, and you can fill out a newcomer's card either in the pew or outside on the polka dot welcome table, and please introduce yourselves to the folks around you. Stick around for coffee and a few leftover treats from yesterday's workday after the service. Uh, a very special thank you to those of you who came for the work day yesterday and got this place all polished up and looking spiffy. So I uh, really appreciate the work that everyone put in, especially uh, Sandy and Deborah for organizing. <laughs> Uh, today is our blessing of the backpacks at the Eucharistic prayer. I will invite um, all of the children or children at heart to come join me up at the altar. Uh, so there is a note in your bulletin when that will happen. Uh, we are in this period of transition, going back to school, people coming back into town. Um, we will be saying goodbye to Reverend Eric next week, will be his last Sunday with us. I will celebrate his ministry among us uh, next Sunday. And then the following Sunday, September 8th, we'll return to our schedule of three services at 8, 9, and 11. And Reverend David will be back from sabbatical that Sunday. So people leaving and coming, and uh, it's a, lot, a lot is happening. Uh, also, next Sunday is your last chance to join our summer choir. Uh, so if you haven't yet uh, gotten a chance to sing with our summer choir, uh, show up at 9 next week and you'll be singing at 10. That is all the announcements I've got for today. 
As we turn our attention to this table, a reminder that it is not my table or the table of St. Mary's or the table of the Episcopal Church, but it is Christ's table, and he sets it for all who hunger and thirst for him. And now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
and would like to join me up here, our children, our youth, or the children at heart, uh, you'll get a better view. around here. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God, thank you for making the earth and all that is in it. Thank you for revealing the truth about you to your people. Thank you for every good thing we see and know and touch, for the big sky above us and the ground beneath us, for our families and for every person we meet. And thank you, God, for everything that we cannot see, the realms of heaven and all the angels and heavenly messengers. We are in awe of you, God. And so we join our voices with those angel voices who even now are singing with the saints. And everything in it. God made us too, and God loved it and loved us. Because God loved us, God has let us make our own choices. Sometimes we make bad choices that hurt us or other people. And then God is like a strong mother or a gentle father who comes close to us and helps us get back on the right track. The Bible tells us stories of how different people have come close to God, and God has come close to them. God has seen all the bad choices that people have made, so God decided to come visit us in a very special way, to show us again how to love each other. God visited us and became human as a young man named Jesus. Jesus was careful to include all people as his friends, some people didn't understand this, and they became angry. They wanted to hurt Jesus. They even wanted to kill him. On the night before Jesus died, he had dinner, as usual, with his friends. And during that meal, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Loving God, remembering now the suffering and death, and proclaiming the resurrection and ascension of Jesus, our Redeemer, we bring you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for us, your people, the body and blood of Christ. And send your Holy Spirit upon us, to gather us by this Holy Communion into one body in our Savior, and fill us with your life and goodness. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Now let's say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. When we eat and drink this holy food, it's not only food for our hungry bodies, it's also food for our hungry and tired hearts. It's for the parts of us inside that feel hurt, and the parts of us that have hurt others. And when we eat and drink it, we remember Jesus and how he loves us and wants us to love each other.
please stand as you're able. Now let's thank God for this sign of his love and presence and for giving us this community and this family, saying together, loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Children, families, and all who love them, go out into the beautiful world that God has made. Go and play, go and learn, go and love others. May you be filled with loving kindness for yourself and everyone around you. May the prayers of this faith community keep you safe, healthy, and full of joy. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Remembering especially all our children, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.